<laughs> Hi everyone, it's Agnes and today I've got another interview for you. I want to introduce you to Angie. Angie's in the US. Hello Angie. Hello. Welcome to our interview. I'm excited to hear your story in more detail because I know you sent it to me but it'll be really lovely to hear all the bits and pieces leading up to it. So what would you like to share right. with us today? Well, um, so me and my person have been together eight years. Yeah. Um, and we have fun. He just, he just turned five. Um, we've lived together for seven years. Um, so in February of this year, um, we broke up. <laughs> and yeah. um, it just... Um, I didn't understand what was going on. We just, he had just had enough and was like, I'm, I'm done. We were still, we lived together. So um, that made it even harder. And so February, he broke up with me and um, I just didn't understand like um, why um, people didn't love me as much as I love them. I, I'm a good person and I, I love people and I try to help people. And I was just like, why is he breaking up with me? Mm. And in the last about year and a half, we had um, some ups and downs with, um, he was um, married and he's divorced and had a couple kids and they had um, gone through, she had moved to another state. It was a big fight over, you know, um, like child support and visitation. You know, it's hard when they're in a whole different state. And I yeah. thought, you know, it definitely didn't help us, and I thought that was the reason why we were having a hard time. Um, but it just was, um, it was just really hard. And so it definitely um, led to one of the reasons why we broke up. Um, so I, would, I begged him to <laughs> take me back. And I mean, I literally did everything that you shouldn't do. But <laughs> have to come back. Yeah. Even I was like, if you love our son, you'll give me yeah. another chance, which is embarrassing to say. But I and I'm grateful that he um, said no, that he's you know stood his grounds and was like, no, you know, we're done. And um, so I carried on all of March, crying and you know uh, throwing myself around. <laughs> and then um, in April, um, in one of my groups on Facebook. Somebody was doing one of those little um, questions or like you could ask a question. And I was like, well, me and my person get back together. And she was like, yes, but do a forgiveness prayer. And I was like, what are you talking about? What, what the heck is this? Um, so then I jumped on YouTube that night and Googled it or did um, YouTube. And um, I listened to a lady doing the Honopono prayer. Yeah. And, uh, cried the whole time, the whole 10 minutes, mm. and then really looking into it, and that's how I came across you, um, and that opened the door, because <laughs> that's when, you know, I found out everyone is you pushed out, and um, and then you recommended, um, um, what was it, um, oh, the book, um, Love Yourself, like, mm. uh, like your life um, depends on it. Yep. Uh, and then I started doing, um, I went through all of your, um, everyone is you pushed out videos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And started watching people's success stories and interviews and everything. And, um, started, I started doing three meditations a night. Um, I started telling myself, I love myself all day long. Um, to the point where my son was saying that he loved himself. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic and so um and so that was so that was the beginning of april that i found you and um so i started doing that and within a week um i could feel like a shift because we I, we still lived together because i stayed home and took over his son and um i could feel a shift and like his text mm -hmm. message changed a little bit like we were always texting each other because I mean, we lived together. We have a son together. He had to yeah. pick up. You know, he bought groceries, and we did, you know, that mm. stuff. 
So, Angie, were you in separate rooms at this stage? Or are you still <laughs> sleeping in the same room? Oh, no. Very separate. separate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Very, because he said he didn't want anything to do with me and, you know, would be civil with me just because of our son. And mm. um, he, he, I mean, it was, it was hard to be around because, you know, you, you're still living with that person. Yeah. You still see him every day and you still have yeah. contact with them. And, um, mm. Like you're still together, but you're not together. You're not yeah. hugging or you're not, you know, it was, it was hard. I think it might've been easier if we weren't living in the same house yeah. together. Yeah. Um, it was this, and I bugged the heck out of him constantly. Like, you please give me another chance? You know, because I saw him all day long. I could see, you know, I yeah. would be like, please give me, I'll, you know, yeah. I'll do this, I'll do that, whatever. <laughs> so his, um, I had done your stuff for about a week, um, your meditations for about a week. And I could, I started to notice like a different tone in the text messages. And he started to be nicer and different, you know, to me. And so I was grateful for that. And then, um, my birthday rolled around in the middle of April and um, he made me dinner and bought me a cake and made me margaritas. <laughs> yeah, it, did, um, it was a definite shift and it probably wasn't, because I had done your meditations and all that for about three weeks and then um, we got back together. I um, was doing your meditation one night and I had left the, the door open but I locked the screen door so I could still you know, see outside. Mm. and um i forgot to unlock it and i went to bed locked the big door and when he came home he djs so he comes home like pretty late and i'm in bed and he um called me to let him in the house because he yep. get into the door and that's he grabbed me and kissed me and told me he wanted to get back together mm. and so we were together for about three weeks but um you could just tell like it was kind of forced and um I felt I felt like I still had to do work because I was still like really angry yeah at him I knew it was me and at the first I, um, I did never like when everyone is you know, I was like yeah well that's true however he did this or he did that you know yeah and um and I still kind of blamed him um for that yeah but I still doing your meditations every night you know three of them wow three, yeah oh yeah so that was I like still, about 45 minutes to an hour's worth of meditation then oh yeah every night yeah every night and then reading you know Neville's books and saying I'm I love myself all day long yeah I probably said love myself probably 500 to a thousand times a day yep yeah you know yeah and when first started saying it I didn't I, I was just like whatever and then it started to like like I felt better yeah. you know I my heart chakra felt better like I felt tingling you know yeah I felt better saying it all day you know all day long um taking a shower at it. anytime I had a spare minute I was saying it yeah um, so yeah doing about 45 minutes to an hour um, every night of your meditations, um, wow. which I still do. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, so we together, you know, three weeks, and then we broke up, and I was kind of angry at myself, um, not at him, but me, because I knew, like, there was still, there was something I was still missing. You know, I, I wasn't, um, so I had to go back through. I did a lot of revision. Yeah. With our mine and his relationship and then um all my past relationships i had to do you know because i felt like i brought baggage from other relationships or life in general yeah um, so i did that for so that was the end of may beginning of june we broke up and so then all of june i did revisions um and then um, did you, Angie, parents, did you revise like specific situa different specific situations or you revised what, the breakup or? I did um, like 
we would have like fights, fights or, or disagreements. Or and the ones that like really bothered me, the ones that I replayed over and over and over again, yeah. I had to do those because I just constantly would replay them in my mind. Yeah. And I was like, I have to get rid of those because it'll never, nothing will change if I keep reliving those. Yeah. So uh, with in his relationship. So I did a lot of revision with that. And some of like my ex-boyfriends, so I had to take a drink. Um, so I did that. And even with like a couple of my family members, you know, like some of the stuff they said, whatever. Um, so then my parents asked me and my son to go and visit them for the 4th of July. Yeah. And so I went there. My mom kind of picked us up and took us there. She, they're only four and a half hours away. So it's not like a long, long drive, you know. So we... um. We stayed with them for a whole week, and I still was doing the meditations, but I couldn't really talk to him that much because um, you're in the middle of, they're in Wyoming, so they're in the middle of Wyoming, and we didn't get reception very well sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so we just talked that much, um, but he was able to call at night, you know, and talk to our son before he went to bed, but um, then right before we came home, like, the text messages started changing again, you know, like, and so I was like, huh, oh, interesting. <laughs> and so when I got home, we um, got back together that day and have been back together ever since. Um, but I still, like I said, I still do your meditations, you know, 45 minutes to an hour every single night. And I still say, I love you all day long or um, I'm lovable. Um, which is huge for me. Um, so do you do the meditation while he's laying in bed next to you? Um, no, I, um, he's going to school. So he goes and studies at night um, in the other room. Yeah. And then I'll sit on the couch and do, um, just put on my headphones and I'll do the meditation right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he knows, like, I've been doing a lot of the Honopono Ono um, meditation, the one you have on the other channel, which is like the 40 minute long one. Yeah, with the um, music, yeah. Yeah, I love that one. I've been doing that one a lot lately. Um, even my son is saying, you know, I love, my, oh, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Like, <laughs> <That's> hilarious. <laughs> you know, it's like you've done the three most important things: the the meditations consistently, the affirmation, mm -hmm. and the whole pono pono. I think they're three of the most important things to change your. Yeah. I'm unloved. I'm unwanted. Because that's at the core of what keeps people away. I agree. Yeah. And, you know, when we first broke up, I blamed it all on, like, his um, his ex-wife and the kids and stuff. Yeah. Not the kids, you know. It's not their fault. Um, but, yeah. like, the child support, you know, fighting about that. And um, it wasn't that. The whole thing was that I didn't love myself. And it, I'm 42, and I've had many years of, you know, this horrible inner dialect with myself, you know, not loving myself, you know, um, feeling second best, feeling, you know, unwanted, a victim, you know? Yep. Um, it's, and we, I've had other relationships and it was just all this baggage, you know, and it finally came to an head in February and it had nothing, you know, the whole fighting with the ex-wife and the child support, yeah. didn't help but it, it was seriously not loving myself enough yeah isn't it amazing that we can go through lives and go through relationships and not know that and then all of a sudden I mean you just think what if we'd gone through this like 20 years ago when there was no YouTube like what the hell did people do I mean yes, yeah bought books but you couldn't you wouldn't have known about buying a whole Pono Pono book you wouldn't have known about you know all these amazing authors to the level that we can access it within five minutes. I mean, we're so lucky that we can change this because we have access. Yeah. And I've done law of attraction and all that, you know, the secret came out and I was huge on that. And, you know, I, I was pretty good at manifesting stuff and um, I just missed that piece. Like growing up, you always hear, Oh, relationships are hard work. You've got to work so hard at it. And it was, you know, and just how I would talk about myself and just, you know, I'm, I think I'm pretty, um, but I would make jokes about myself 
um, you know, like my sister happens to be really skinny and I have always had, you know, had a battle with my weight and I would say stuff like, no, you know, I drive by McDonald's and I gain five pounds, you know, like that kind of self-talk, you know, and I really had to change the way I speak about myself and to myself, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's, um, oh, even how I, even this. I mean, what a great partner you can be and how fantastic because your son's mother, you did the work. He now benefits from having a family. Yeah. Brilliant. It's like he he's saved, he just saved his five. You saved his childhood. Yeah, I, you know, and I wish my parents knew about this stuff. They didn't know about this stuff, you know, and they, um, and I tried to teach them the secret and they <laughs> weren't, they were like, yeah, whatever, you know, <laughs> they weren't yeah. really um, into it. Um, but I just grew up, you know, you know, you have to work so hard and you, you know, every, you know, it's just, he'll grow up not knowing that he'll hear a different, you know, version of stuff like, it's, I just wish they would teach you like that stuff in school or something, you know? I know. Wouldn't it be a different world? I mean, the yeah. fact that he walks around saying, I love myself, and he, he is the whole Pono Pono. Wow. How old is he now? He just turned five. Yeah. Wow. Imagine. He's learning this stuff at, f at four and five years. I mean, that that's incredible that he's already got access to that. Yeah. Yeah. That's and amazing. he's... There's times when he'll just sit on the couch and he'll just be like, I need to say Hona Pono Ono. And he'll just sit there and he'll just say it. And he, <laughs> he's really a lot more advanced than I was. <laughs> brilliant. So brilliant. Wow, you getting online and looking up one thing and it taking you to the whole Pono Pono and then it taking you to self love. I mean, what? I mean, you look back and you go, wow. When I look yeah. back now, I what a what a state of grace to have yeah. been given all that by just getting on YouTube and looking up forgiveness prayer from what one person said in a Facebook group. Yeah, Amazing. yeah, it just um, snowballed once you know because she said that. And you know what's interesting is I'm in a um, um, a mantra group and stuff, yeah. and we do them. And they had done like. Um, Hona Ponono for like a month, and I was like, "Oh, I'm not doing that one. I don't have to do that one." And <laughs> funny, yeah. you know, because I do literally do it every night. But um, it snowballed because once I saw that, and I saw the video of you talking, explaining, you know, the Hona Ponono and with um, the guy and all that. Um, and then I just started watching your videos. Um, everyone, as you pushed out, yeah. and it is not just our relationship mine and his but I can see you know past um like friends and family members and ex-bosses where I was like oh that was me pushed out you know yeah. I know it, it just cool. opens your eyes to why you've had so much trouble with different things and different people yeah yeah, yeah exactly Angie you've got a good and daily routine yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, if I, um, I try not to ever skip it once in a while, um, I'll not do one, but I, um, I stick pretty close to that, you know, yeah. but, and on your channel, listening to the other ones, but I bet, um, which I love them all, but I, I yeah. definitely, like when I first started doing them, I, I would listen to different ones because I didn't know which ones would yeah. resonate with, you know, yeah, and then I, up with you know that combo where um was it the um the whispering technique the um i'm um, first best and was it i love myself that combo which i loved and then you know radiating out love um those were huge yeah i didn't have to do the text message one because we were texting and i mean we we're calling you so those i didn't really have to you know concentrate on yeah but wow. yeah, I that's so good. I have to do it. And I when um I first started doing it, I would listen to that hour long Hona Pono Ono of the guy. Yeah, Jason. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah so I would, I would fall, fall asleep listening to him. Yeah, yeah, I use that one too sometimes. Look, I think the whole Ho'oponopono is such a great way to, yes, do the self-forgiveness for getting yourself in those situations, but it's also, it stops you worrying. It stops you having anxiety. It stops you going into depression if you do it because you can't be thinking, doing the Ho'oponopono and thinking thoughts that make you feel anxiety, depression or whatever. It's such a great way to pull the mind out of whatever negative state you're festering on it's such yeah. a good way and doing it daily. I still use it daily too, Angie. It's one of my favorite yeah. things because it's so simple. You just get yes. this relief. The more you do it, you just sink into, ah, oh, everything's okay. I surrender. I let go. I'm going to allow. I'm not going to force. I'm going to literally forgive myself for, you know, the things I've done and forgive others and just let go. Now I have better understanding. I can let go. And, uh, to get to some peace. It's such a great one to go into a feeling of peace when you go to bed and go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. And I, when we broke up the second time in uh, May, end of May, beginning of June, yeah. like I wasn't worried. I was like, well, it happened once it'll happen again, you know? Nice. And I just, I wasn't stressed out and I wasn't, um, I just let it go. I, I didn't have to obsess about it because yeah. uh, I knew, it was it was going to happen Lovely. and that that was a huge relief off of me that you know because if it happens once it'll happen again yeah and isn't that a nice moment of confidence even when everything's falling apart again you go you know what it's happened once it'll happen again. <laughs> yeah your big disaster oh i'm not loved again and oh, i'm single by myself and oh yeah. and going into all that drama you just went no yeah I love when you look back at those moments yeah. 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 And then those yeah. first couple months when we broke up, like in February and March, man, I was just a disaster. I couldn't stop crying. I was. Yeah. <laughs> it's <was> embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. But well, it, yeah, it clears out a lot of old pain from those moments. Yeah. 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 It was. Uh, but the second time around was so much easier. Yeah. But you know what I like is that, you know, I often hear people get back together with a specific person and then they let go of their routine. Mm -hmm. And then three months down the track, the person's saying, get away from me. You're suffocating me because you're needy and they're trying to get away from you again. So the routine is important to get the person back, but the routine is important to keep yourself in a loving state to be able to be a good partner to someone. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah Cause you can, I can tell when, um, like if I do skip, I don't, tr I don't normally skip them, but once in a while, I, I'm just really tired. I'm going to bed, but I can tell, I can feel it. Yep. You know, and yep. it's, and I had to really change the way um, I talked about him also Yeah. because, you know, together eight years, that's a lot of, you know, eight years is a chunk of time and you kind of, you think, oh, you know, he doesn't do this or he doesn't do that. And I had to really um, change the way I worded stuff and thought about stuff. Yeah, exactly. You've got to treat them with the highest level of respect and love in your speech to other people. Yeah. Angie, I don't Is know it, what's happening, but you're moving around and it's crackling really badly. Have you got your speaker on? Oh, yeah. Can you still hear me? Yeah, it's just when you move, it does a lot of um, noise. Oh, okay. Is that better now? Yeah, that's better. Yes. Okay. I'll stay quick. <laughs> wonderful. It is really wonderful. It's so good to hear, again, self-love. You put that first. You work on that. You don't expect to get love from someone else. Once you do that, you do get love from other people, but you have to be feeling love to get love. You have to be feeling wanted to be wanted. You can't be feeling unloved and right. you expect someone to give you the very opposite of what you're vibrating out. It just doesn't work that way. So, right. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm surprised um, it didn't happen sooner, you know, with all that horrible self-talk and, you know, yeah. um, I'm surprised it <laughs> yeah, it's that long. Back, you do think that. Why didn't it collapse sooner? I was negative for so long. Yeah. It's amazing people didn't leave me or that I didn't create worse stuff. 
But yeah, I mean, yeah. Hicks always says that the power of, of love is much, and positivity is much stronger than the power of negativity. And that kind of illustrates it in what you've just said. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I just, yeah. it's so wonderful to hear that you've got your family back and, and you did it under quite challenging situation, which is living together. That's much, like you say, that's much harder because you can't get away from yourself. There's no, there's no, the person's yeah. going to walk back through that door and you've got to deal with, they don't want me, they don't want me, they don't want me, they don't want me, again and again. Right. Right, all day long. Yeah, and it was just, it was so, it was so hard. Yeah. Because you just, you get that break. You don't get that break, of, you know. Yeah. But it was just constant, constant. Does he know you're, I mean, does he know what you've been studying and what you've been doing? Like, does, do he know you do your self-love meditations and all that, or you don't talk about it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he knows. <laughs> he, he knows, must yeah. Because right. I'm like, I'm going to do my meditation. Yeah. He's what? He must be grateful for the results. Yeah. 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 And you could, um, and it's just weird how, like, little stuff started happening like you manifest stuff and you get st you know like once I started doing that self-love other stuff came up you know like like I got two hundred dollars put on my gas bill you know out of nowhere and you know it was just it's just snowballs it just you know yeah it was because I, I like I said I've done law of attraction for years but it never I don't think it ever touched on this you know and I had watched Abraham Hicks and all, you know, all those guys. And I just, yeah, I, the, I love myself and all that is so huge. It plays such a huge part in it. Wasn't that book amazing? Love yourself like your life depends on it. By oh, yeah. And, I, you know, I on one night, of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's such and a I, quick and simple, simple and quick, but boy, oh boy, you, the benefits you get from reading that is astounding. Yeah, yeah, and then I read um, Neville's um, uh, law, um, land or the promise, um, law yep. of the promise, land. Of, yeah, yeah, that one's really good. I have a couple of his other books that I need to read, um, yep. but he's oh, so, I'm like I'm bummed that I didn't find him sooner. You know, I know, I know. Well, I found him, you know, a long time ago, but. I remember when I read that book, The Law and the Promise, I couldn't sleep. I was like this electricity was going through my body reading that book. But, you know, I, even though I read it, I still struggled applying it for a long time. I yeah. tried. I understood it when I read the stories, but applying it was challenging. I mean, I still, you know, tried and kept at it and got some results. But I think, you know, I feel like it takes years to understand the depth of what's being talked about to be applied that that going yeah. from knowledge to application that is the journey that you know every time you have a situation that you see how much you really understand it yeah yeah because i um sometimes like when i read him i have to reread it a couple of times yeah so i'm just like uh you know it's pretty deep, you know. It is. It is. It's, and you can pick amazing. up the same book five or ten years later and you go, wow, I thought I read that and I understood it. That, I look at it completely differently ten years later. So, yeah, it is it is such an incredible body of work that Neville has put out to help us. Yeah, amazing. he's amazing. He is. He is. I he's still my favourite. He's still, I've read a lot of different things. He is still, he's like the old grandfather that you never had. Because right. I go through all your Neville nuggets. I think I've listened to all of them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was trying to make it a little bit more simple for those that, you know, were just starting. Because it's like yeah. you're taking a little bite size of something and then something to relate it to that's kind of 2018, yeah. 20, I mean, it was 2014, I think, when I started the nuggets. But it's got to be current in this day and age as to, you know, it's got to be relevant to the decade or the era that you live in. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. Fabulous. Angie, that's brilliant. Have you got any kind of thoughts about, 
okay, if I could really share something that's the nugget that I really learnt in this whole process, what would you say to people? Um, well, definitely the self-love. And then, um, I don't know, um, there were so many. <laughs> um, the daily routine, I think, is what I've got from listening to you, the importance of the daily routine. It's the turtle that wins the race. You do it daily, you do it daily, you do it daily, you do it daily, and it washes over you, and eventually you get to where you just feel loved and wanted and your relationship just changes. Right. That's what yeah. I see in your story is you have a fabulous daily routine, and just because you're back together doesn't mean you've stopped it. You still respect right. yourself and do what you need to do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because I do it you know, every night, and, um, you know, when we wake up, I wake up in the morning um, I just started off with, I love myself and I'll just lay there and say, it, you know, yeah. before I even get to bed. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Made a huge difference, you know? It does. Huge. Rather than, oh, they're not giving me or they don't do this anymore. You start with all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And once, you know, once I changed like my um, dialogue, inner dialogue about like him, you know, you could see stuff changing. Like, he, you know, would do little things because I was like, oh, he never does this, never does that. Well, once I started changing that, you know, he yeah. he pays more attention or he does this, you know, it definitely changes. It does. And but, I think women are chronic for that. Oh, he doesn't do that anymore. He used to do this, constantly looking at the glass half empty. Yeah. Then you're just creating more of the person not doing anything because you yeah. focus so much on what they're not doing they continue to not do anything. So yeah, it's like a shift in, it's like a real anti-gratitude habit. Mm -hmm. And it's the gratitude habit that brings them back to doing those things. I mean, men stop doing things because women exist that keep those comments alive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah. That's I agree. Cause once I started changing that, it was, you know, and even now, you know, just with him, but other people, you know, yeah, yeah. my being, you know, um, it just mm. once you start, you know, or stop talking like negative and stuff, yeah, you know, this or they don't do that, and it, it's huge. It definitely changes. Yeah, it does. And keep looking for things that they do. Keep looking for the good stuff. Keep looking for the wonderful things. Keep re. And if they're not doing anything yet, keep reliving the memories of them when they did used to do it. That right. changes the tide. It turns the tide again. Right. Um, I've been lately, like, just sitting for, like, 10 or 15 minutes, and I'll just think of all the good things. And, you know, he does this, and he does this. You know, good, good things. Not, you know. Um, not, but, and what a difference that makes, too. That's a good, that's a good little technique. 10 minutes mm -hmm. of all the good stuff they do. That's a great technique. Yep. I've just been doing that in the last couple weeks, I think. Yeah. I'm doing that. He's such a good provider. He's, you know, you know, stuff like that. And it just yeah, it opens the doors for other things. Yeah. It certainly does. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming and sharing all that. There's so many good bits in there for people to practice. And are you willing to answer comments in the threads or do you, you know, would oh, you... Yeah. Um, yeah, not a Okay, that'd be great. That would be great. I think um, you know, having someone ahead of you that's actually manifested something is always so helpful. Pay it forward. Those of us yeah. who've got some success to be able to put our hand out to those that are still su suffering and struggling. So Yeah. Thank you, Angie. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good. Do you want to say goodbye to everybody and then I'll say goodbye and then we can say goodbye in private behind the scenes. Okay. Bye everybody. And thanks for um, all the wonderful messages I've gotten from everyone, but they're more than welcome to contact me. Okay. Good stuff. I'll put your story down below again, Angie, too, for those that um, have missed it. Bye okay. everyone. Hope you enjoyed the interview. Hope you get some really good nuggets out of it so you can practice and give some put some effort and energy into the stuff that Angie did. Therefore you can get some relief in your situations as well. Lots of love and see you in the next one.